Okay, I was trying. Hi, everybody. Sorry, we're live. Uh, welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of VCTV. Uh, so VCTV is the venture capital TV from La Token, as we all know. So I'm I'm the host and moderator of the show, uh, Sunny Mohanty. I'm also the regional director um, based in Singapore representing La Token. So every Wednesday, we are back at uh, 9.30 a.m. UK and 4.30 p.m. Singapore to discuss market-making insights. And our guest speaker is Minu Sareen. So this is our third episode of the series. This is the market-making insights series. This is the third episode. And today we're going to talk about automated market making. So before before automated market making, I would like to give uh, the viewers a little bit of perspective why we are discussing this. So ever wondered, like, you know, because we work in exchanges, crypto exchanges, La Token is a centralized exchange. When it comes to a DEX, which is a decentralized exchange, ever wondered how um, the, uh, the, you know, trades and prices work? So unlike traditional exchanges, like a centralized exchange, DEX, DEX, which is a decentralized exchange, uses an automated market maker, which is AMM for short, to enable a fluid trading system that borders an autonomy, liquidity, and automation. So last, I think last topic, we discussed about market making basics. Um, so as the name implies, market making is a process involved in defining the prices of assets and simultaneously providing liquidity to the market. So we discussed about the basics. We spoke with few projects. Today, we're going to specifically discuss automated market making. And I'm going to introduce our guest speaker, Minu Sareen. Minu, welcome. Hi, thanks, Sunny. How are you? Welcome back. Welcome I'm back. doing good. Welcome what about you? Very good, very good, very excited always to have you on this show. Um, so it's a very educational sort of session and I learn a lot from you and our viewers have expressed the same as well. That's and I'm sure many, many, many must have reached out to you already. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. No, it has been an interesting thing because uh, ever since I started on blockchain, and it has got a number of facets to it, the technology, the market and stuff. And uh, over the last... One second, one second. Term, yeah, sorry. Go on. No sorry. So I said then lately what I had been doing is also trying to study the market, market economics. And I just wanted to kind of share my learnings. And if anybody has another or some more, uh, many more comments to add, it kind of enriches everyone's knowledge. So I put it across as a knowledge sharing uh, forum. And uh, that's also uh, a part of my podcast, which is Blockchain Hustle Podcast, the tag that you see here under my uh, yes. picture. Yeah. So what 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 do you cover on, in this Blockchain Hustle Podcast, Minu? Okay, so this Blockchain Hustle Podcast, I started around uh, almost two years back, one and a half to two years back. And the idea was to bridge the blockchain concepts uh, across the enterprises. So people know about what is a smart contract or people would say that, oh, I'm going to use a smart contract there. Or what are the different consensus mechanism of a blockchain? What are oracles? Uh, how is a block created? Uh, so I started with that concept. So what I used to do earlier was that uh, I take one concept and then I take a real life usage, not a kind of a proof of concept, but a real life usage of that particular concept, whether it is your asset tokenization or it is a smart contract or a consensus mechanism, whatever. And then uh, I started sharing a little bit more on the blockchain impact in various domains. Right. So I took out one series uh, on blockchain in the governance, in the public sector. Right. So how the gov governments around the world, they are leveraging blockchain for their services that they offer to the citizens and residents. And then when the pandemic hit, uh, I started another series, which was blockchain in the new norm. And uh, so I completed that. And then I started on the tokenomics. And that's when we got in touch with each other. So my idea basically for the podcast was to enhance my know-how and uh, because there's a lot of information overload on the internet, right? And if you really want to cut through the hype, et cetera, 
uh, you get to some basic stuff which is uh, laid out. That's what I wanted to understand myself first and then right. share it. So if it helps people and I get enriched in the process, nothing like it. So my podcast is mostly on that. I have around 40, 40, 48, 50 episodes. Wow. That's that's absolutely um, a great piece of news. And today, what are we discussing today, Minu? Okay, so uh, Sunny, as you rightly uh, summarized in the beginning, uh, in this market making series, we first started with water efficient markets and efficient markets in terms of the different stakeholders like uh, the token issuer and also the trader. And then we also spoke about the liquidity and the importance of liquidity in an efficient market. And then in the previous episode, I shared on the market making, their role, and how do they inject liquidity into the market. And then you had the share from a few people uh, from La Token also, the clients or the partners. So in today's episode, I go on to the next step and I talk a little bit on the automated market makers. So this is the topic for, uh, uh, for today. Fantastic. So I have got your uh, slides up. Um, so okay. I'm I'm sharing it I'll now. Start so let's just kick start. Yes. Okay, fine. So uh, the first question when we uh, come to the automated market maker, the first question which arises is why do we need them? Okay. So as compared to the typical trading world, uh, crypto uh, trading is a little bit different. Two main reasons being that it is pretty volatile. And the second one is that the trading is done 24 by 7. So under this scenario, market makers often tend to go towards the AMMs, which is the automated market maker. So I'll be using AMM as and when here. Now, what the AMMs do is they decentralize this process of market making. So in the previous episode, I shared about how market makers build up the market, build up the liquidity by doing a buy and a sell, the bid and the ask quotation simultaneously. So what AMMs are doing is that they are decentralizing this process. Now, in any typical trade, what happens is that it, the trade requires two traders. One buys and the other sells. So there is a counterparty. And then there is an order book. In the AMM, you do not have a counterparty. There are no buyers. There are no sellers. There's no order book. What happens is that you are making the trade with a smart contract. So the smart contract is what is being used or it executes in the decentralized way. So that is why we say that the AMMs decentralize the whole process. So what happens is that how are the tokens priced in the AMM? So in the AMM, the token pricing is done using some automated algorithm. It's an algorithmic approach. That is to say your token price gets decided by the algorithm, okay? So that's what yeah. I meant here as a token pricing uh, from the pricing algorithm. So what, as I said, the smart contract is the one which executes your trade. So the right. counterparty is taken care of by the smart contract in this AMM. Right. But then the market still needs to be created. The liquidity still yeah. needs to be built. And that's where your liquidity providers come in. They provide right. the funds which are put into the liquidity pool and that is uh, for a particular exchange for a one token pair or something like that. So right. that is where the liquidity providers come in from the liquidity pool. So understand that this is different from the traditional market making that we uh, discussed last episode, right? Yeah, that is very, very much different. Yeah. So what is this liquidity pool? And how to create okay. this liquidity pool? Okay, so liquidity pool, as the word goes, it by itself is uh, it's a collection of the funds or the assets. Okay. And if we talk about, in a very simple, basic term, a single, uh, single token uh, liquidity pool will have an equal value of a token pair. So when I, let me just, uh, if you go to the next slide, I'll just illustrate it with that example. Right. So, for example, I am talking about a token pair. And let's say I take Ether and DAI. So, Ether and DAI is one token pair which is there in the Ether DAI liquidity pool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, let's say the price of Ether, one Ether, is equal to $1,000. Mm -hmm. 
I'm just taking hypothetical figures here. Okay. Yes. Yes. So let's say the price of one ether is a thousand dollars. So what happens is, and a die being a stable coin by itself, it's also one US dollar. Yeah. If I have to have an equal value of the token pair in the liquidity pool, that would mean that for every one ether, you need thousand die. Right. Correct. So Correct. You need that kind of. The, this is what we are talking about. Equal value. Yeah. So if the price changes, if the number changes, the composition of your liquidity pool will change. Right. So that is meant by your uh, liquidity pool in this particular case. So you have a token pair there. Okay. In this case, obviously, Dai is a stable coin. Yeah. Dai is a stable coin. Yeah. So. If you if you just get on to the next slide, Sunny, I'll explain yeah. a little bit more on that. Sure. Thank you. So I earlier I mentioned that the algorithm, uh, the automated market makers, they use an algorithmic approach towards the token pricing, right? Yeah. Yeah. So a very often used example for this uh, algorithm approach is one which is called X into Y is equal to K. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do a little bit of the mathematical sums are here. So just bear with me. Yeah. So <laughs> this algorithm, if it goes as X into Y is equal to K. Yeah. K is a constant and it goes by various names. It can be called, it is called a liquidity constant or a liquidity pool constant or a pool constant. You right. take your uh, choice here. Yeah. So what happens is we are talking about X into Y is equal to K where X is the total number of token A, yeah. to the quantity of token A in the pool. Right. And Y is the quantity of token B in the pool. So the total quantity, the ratio between the two quantities or X into Y is a liquidity constant, which means that anytime I increase or decrease one of the tokens in the number, yeah. The other token has to change to reflect uh, the same liquidity constant. constant. That constant right. doesn't change. Doesn't change. Yeah. So in this particular example. Yeah. The second part of this, apart from this liquidity constant, is that you need an equal value of the token pair. So when I spoke about what is a liquidity pool, mm -hmm. I mentioned that it has an equal value of the token pair. What it means is that the total value or the total price of token A in that pool would be equal to the total price of all the tokens, token B in the pool. Right. Which, if I put it into the formula here, you yeah. have X, which we took it as the number of token A, quantity of token right. A. Yeah. You multiply it by the price of the token A. So you get right. the total value of token A in the pool. Yeah. And then you have the uh, quantity of token B, which is Y, and you multiply it by the price of that token B. So the right. total value of token A and the total value of token B in that pool, it has to be equal. So equal right. value. Okay. okay. Yeah. So that's where we start from. Mm -hmm. Now, if we get on to the next one, next yeah. slide. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Sorry, you have a question? Um, is it the next slide I'm on? Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. Right. So... I wanted to uh, explain here, how does the liquidity pool here changes with respect to the price? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Now, let us say my liquidity pool has got 10 ether. Mm -hmm. So to have the same constant, that is the liquidity constant, I need to have 10,000 die. Yeah. One ether is a thousand die, right? Mm -hmm. We took that as a starting point. Yeah. If I'm taking 10 ether, I need 10,000 die. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So the constant liquidity constant is 10 into 10,000, which is 100,000. Mm -hmm. So this constant, just keep it in mind that it remains unchanged. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And let's say the price was $1,000. So you do know that it is an equal value because 10 into $1,000 is 10,000. And on the die side, you have 10,000 die multiplied by one, which is the stable coin price, is equal to 10,000. So they're all balanced. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. If you are with me till now. Yes, yes, I'm <laughs> trying to be. 
<laughs> being my math. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just trying to simplify that. So your liquidity pool initially for a price of Ether as $1,000, your liquidity pool has 10 Ether and 10,000 DAI. Right. Right. Now let's say the price of Ether changes to 4,000. Mm-hmm. I know right now it is hovering somewhere in the 2000s, right? Yes. Let's say the price of Ether goes up to 4,000. Right. What happens to the liquidity pool? So if let us say the liquidity pool remains the same, that is 10 Ether and 10,000 die, mm-hmm. then the arbitrage traders will jump in. So arbitrage, ah. as a recap is, you buy because of the disparity in the price of of the token yeah. across multiple exchanges, right? Yes, yes. The, you buy at one and you sell it at another and you get your profit. Yes. So what happens now if let's say my Ether price has gone from 1,000 to 4,000 mm-hmm. and in the pool, then people will start removing the Ether and piling right. into that pool more of the uh, die. Die. Right? Balance. Yes, of course. Yeah. yeah. So this will keep happening till you get the balance balance and right. the price of ether reflects the global market price absolutely got it now what is the question comes what is the <laughs> amount what is the number of ether and not what is the number of die in this new <laughs> equation right. which has one ether as four thousand dollars yeah okay yeah so uh we go back into a two equations one of the constant and one of the equal value so on the slide, I have put it down. The two variables we have is the quantity of ether and the quantity of dye in this new liquidity pool. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know the new price of ether, which is $4,000. And yeah. you know the price of dye, which is $1. Yeah. So you have two variables and you have two equations. Mm-hmm. You work out the maths yeah. and what you end up with is that you need to have five ether and twenty thousand die to die. reflect this price. So it became half, and that doubled. Yeah. Yeah. So Got you it. see, even with this new composition, yeah, your ratio is five into four thousand. That's twenty thousand. Yeah. Twenty thousand is a value of your ether, mm-hmm. and twenty thousand die is equal to twenty thousand dollars. So the yeah. value is equal. Yeah. And the liquidity constant 5 into 20,000 is 100,000. Yeah. So that also remains. Constant. So this is how the pricing changes the composition of the uh, two tokens within the pool. Within a pool. Okay. Within the pool. Yeah. So that's Great. how it, it changes. So, Great. and of course, vice versa. Yeah. So I think we've gone to the end of the show, end of the slide. Uh, yeah, if I have time, I had put in something what is called the impermanent loss, one of the risks of the liquidity pool. Yeah, uh, if so, you want, I can discuss that. But uh, I have, have a question. Have... Sorry, I have I have a question for you. Sure. Um, can I just a little bit stop the presentation? Uh, so, yeah. so the automated market making. This is artificial based technology, artificial intelligence based technology. I'm assuming is that correct? Or, uh, okay, it's an algorithmic approach and you're implementing it with some formulas for, with the, the coding and something is done. I, I yeah. guess the analysis of the price and all the stuff, the, all the technicalities behind maybe using machine learning or something, I'm not sure about that. Yeah. And where, where, thing, yeah. yeah. Are they used in centralized exchanges or are they used in decentralized exchanges like DEX? The AMMs are used in the decentralized exchange. Okay. And uh, in the centralized exchange, there's more of that market making. So because, as I said, in the decentralized, the AMMs are decentralizing the process. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the decentralized exchange, all the trades are executed with a smart contract. That's where the liquidity is locked. That's how it would uh, come to a price. That's a decentralized way that you do it. Absolutely. You know, you know, I have seen many tokens before coming to a centralized exchange like La Choket, they would go to a Uniswap first. Hmm, 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 is, it, hmm. is, it, is it why they go to a decentralized first like a Uniswap to get the liquidity into their uh, token or because of that, this particular reason? Okay, so I, uh, yeah, there are a few reasons. 
So I have, I could talk about the differences between C, uh, centralized and decentralized exchanges. Mm -hmm. And I had in mind to put into my next episode, oh, okay. making your liquidity work harder. <laughs> so right. uh, there are ways by which uh, you can make your liquidity uh, give you more returns. Okay. And uh, so when, like in Uniswap, you have a particular pair, let's say EtherDAI, for example, when you put in your um, stable coin, when you put in your token, etc., when you give the liquidity into the liquid pool, that thing is locked. How can you make that, that all your already existing assets, how can you make them work harder? So right. there are a few techniques to do that. Uh, I think it will be injustice if I speak now. We can talk mm -hmm. about it in the next episode when we cover that. Absolutely. So guys, stay tuned for our next episode because this is something very uh, popularly seen that um, tokens go to uh, DEX first and they come to a centralized exchange. Obviously, centralized exchanges have their own benefits for which they come to a centralized exchange at a later stage. Uh, so let's have let's just speak with two live projects uh, tokens who are listed on Law Token. So they've got something to share with you and probably ask a question uh, or two um, regarding uh, liquidity and market making. I'm going to bring the first uh, project representative from HPNS and his name is Malika Arjun Patil and uh, I bring him online now. Hi, uh, hi. Hi, How hi, hi. Hi, Ms. Erin and hi, Ms. Son hi. Monty. Very pleasure to meet, meet you, both of you. And it was a uh, uh, very beautiful session and uh, it has uh, given the clear idea and the brief idea how the automated market works. But still, I would uh, like to uh, know a few uh, things about uh, the automated market. Because since we are uh, opposite to the market making, uh, so automated market making, so we are uh, P2P, we are actually the P2P uh, uh, centralized exchange so so how does uh, uh, the slippage been addressed in in case of uh, automated market making uh so that's where the algorithms come into the place so i would not be able to give you details about it because there are a lot of algorithms which are there in the market but when we, the slippage is because of the liquidity pr uh, problem right so if I have through the automated market maker, I have this the pricing to be taken care of in such a way that that is maintained. I guess it would help towards uh, reducing your slippage. Okay. Because I so just this is want to... yeah. Sorry. Okay, this is completely based on the algorithm and which is preset defined. Yeah, yeah, and I guess people would be or uh, I don't know who the entities are formally called but I, I'm just generally terming them as people, they would be looking into the things as to what needs to be fine-tuned, what is the input parameters that need to be put in the input data so that there is not, there's no volatility and therefore it doesn't result in, it result into any slippage. Okay, but it's still, uh, uh, what do you say, the big question, like how the, exactly the liquidity uh, is maintained uh, due to the, pr pr uh, respect to the, the price fluctuations. Uh, in mm -hmm. case of uh, so USDT and B Binance USD, a like, lot of these days I see a lot of stable coins coming up. Yeah, yeah. So, so what happens in your liquidity pool is that people are putting in the uh, whatever the pair is, right? Yep. The so that the liquidity pool doesn't get upset or something. There are various mechanisms by which you lock in your liquidity. Now, because somebody can put in his assets there and then he can okay. remove it and there's something called a rug pull in which the rogue uh, traders, the uh, rogue uh, token issuers would do that. Uh, they, they pump up the token price and then they remove it, uh, the liquidity, and you're left with the tokens which uh, you can't sell. Yeah. Uh, but apart from that, what happens is that when I put, as a liquidity provider, I put funds into the liquidity pool. Then there would be some, uh, the AMM uh, protocol decides the different rewards which are given to the liquidity providers. So they're putting in their assets. Now, as what I was telling uh, Sunny uh, just a little bit earlier is that, let's say as a liquid liquidity provider, I need to see a better return for my assets. Mm -hmm. I don't want it to be locked in for a longer time. 
for locking the liquidity, there is a certain reason why you do that, right? So that you don't get any uh, unwanted uh, thing in the liquidity pool resulting into the token prices going haywire. So you have different things called your yield farming, liquidity mining, uh, which comes across. You have your liquidity pool token, which is there, <clears> by which <throat> these liquidity uh, providers, they're incentivized uh, by having higher returns as to keep the liquidity, liquidity pool uh, proper, stable. <clears throat> okay. Right. Thank I you. think, we, I think uh, we have covered most of the questions from Malikarjun. Malikarjun, would you like to tell us like which project you represent and a uh, and little bit about uh, yourself? Well, uh, this is Malikarjun Patil and uh, we are a Forex brokerage company from Hong Kong and we are licensed from Vanuatu. And I'm present, uh, representing this HPNS coin uh, because they have very uh, got a very innovative uh, way to bring uh, the community and build an ecosystem. And uh, in a very short period of time, we see... Hello. I think we have lost him, right? Tremendous uh, growth in All terms right. of uh, community. Okay, I think the connection is a little bit weak. Uh, Alika Arjun, we, we see you freezing in between. Our okay, so let's just, Shanky, welcome. Uh, while uh, we talk to Malika Arjun Patel to uh, so probably fix his connection. Shanky, welcome. So so tell us about you hi, and your hi, token. Sumi. Hi, Sumi, how are you? Hey, I'm good, good, hi, good. how are you? Ah, yes. uh, my name is Shankar Sangla and I am one of the founders of the Minimals token. Uh, Minimals is an eco-friendly cryptocurrency developed to counter the carbon footprint, uh, which has been developed, which has been rising because of the, you know, uh, mining. Uh, and to give back to the society, we have collaborated with NGOs so that uh, we, uh, we have pledged to, you know, plant 2 million trees by the end of 2022. And we chose a lot token to be our very primary first uh, exchange to get listed on because lot token has been promoting uh, new tokens very uh, you know primarily and uh, they are giving offers because uh, like uh, airdrops and uh, you know uh, trading combinations at the very early stage which helps to boost the token. So that is yeah. something which we are you know aiming to you know get boosted and do the things. So my question to Minister Rain is like. Uh, what is the difference between you know the liquidity at decentralized exchanges and the centralized exchanges like Uniswap being the decentralized and Binance and Light Open like being the you know uh, centralized exchanges? We are covering uh, that topic next episode on the next episode, <laughs> but maybe we can just have a little. Okay, I, 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 was, I was okay. It's okay. It's okay. Maybe little. Yeah, no, the, the, the basic difference of your liquidity pool across the centralized and the decentralized exchange is uh, the way that liquidity is maintained, the price is handled, and the number of coins is balanced in the liquidity pool. So whereas in the AMM, it is automated, as they call it, as everything is smart contract, uh, uh, locked, driven, uh, in your centralized exchange, you may uh, there are these uh, market makers who will put in your uh, the orders, the buy and the sell orders. They may deploy bots for the same, so you could have a little, uh, uh, they can, uh, sorry, deploy bots for the same, or they would be doing it themselves. But either way, what they're doing is they're creating additional orders into the order book. So by doing that, what they're doing is they're creating, uh, add contributing to the order book, they're increasing your order book volume, they decrease the spread, and they're increasing your liquidity. Yes. So it's a way the order book is enhanced. Now in a AMM, there is no order book, right? There are no makers, takers. Everything is your uh, uh, algorithm uh, driven and it's locked in the smart contract. So the trading which happens there because the smart con you're engaging with a smart contract, the fees, it, it uh, requires the gas fees. So the trading fees would be different from what you have at your centralized exchange. So there are a few differences. And I would say that the decentralized exchange, you can very simply say that it is a decentralized exchange. But then in, within that category, you have an, a few flavors. Mm -hmm. So you have a decentralized exchange in which uh, you will have everything, all the trade is executed on the blockchain. 
which is called the on-chain blockchain decentralized exchange or on-chain DEX. And on another side, another flavor that you have in that is, it's called the off-chain uh, trading in which your orders are not done on the blockchain. They are done off the blockchain. Whereas your uh, the order book is maintained off the blockchain, but the actual trading happens in the blockchain. Why they do that, what is required, etc. There are a few things which I do not know whether I should get into it or not, because <laughs> I had a few things to share on the <laughs> EH and the DEX. So, but the main thing is that okay. it's not very simple to just say, if there's an AMM there, it handles. There are a few more uh, tasks. And what kind of profile of the traders or people who go for the DEX is different from the ones who go to the CEH? Yes. So there are things like your anonymity. There are things like the speed of your trade. There are a few factors which come into the into play. Yeah, totally, totally correct. So Shanky, uh, with La Token is a centralized exchange. You you will meet um, uh, our partners who are our uh, market making partners, and they are human beings. And plus, you will also have that bots. So your your token will be supported okay. by human beings and bots both on a centralized exchange. So Shanky, I'm going to uh, thank you. So for your token, welcome to the token. I'm happy that you've chosen as an exchange partner you, and man. we're going to grow together. Uh, Shanky, I'm going to put you backstage okay. a little bit and bring Mr. Malika Arjun, who's been waiting. And yeah, okay, thank you again. Sure. Hi, sir. Back. Hi, hi. You back? Hi, hi. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so, so no, actually, okay. we are. Uh, 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 our company co community is full on a vacation like uh, there was a recently program announced and we are all on a holidays okay sometime you know wow. the resort they, it get disconnected <laughs> well uh coming to our hpns token and this has been influenced and uh, you see the tremendous growth and this is only a three months old uh, project and uh, we got uh, the main idea behind this is uh, creating a marketplace ecosystem now uh, for all the digital products like market, the real estates, music, uh, then uh, we have uh, a gaming, arts, various kinds of arts into this. And the community, what we are with the help of this HPNS ecosystem, uh, this usage of this HPNS will be across all the utilities across the globe, uh, right from flight booking. That, uh, and recently we have announced a water shot uh, crypto exchange. And uh, our community has built uh, through various uh, Telegram head drops. And uh, presently, we have 75,000 plus followers on Telegram and 50,000 plus on Twitter and over 16,000 uh, holders of our coins at presently. Uh, we are coming up with different two kind of an incentives uh, staking programs. And we have been very loyal. And uh, the first program was very quite uh, successful. And uh, the second, there was an announcement of a uh, second staking program and which has given a lot of boost to the uh, our uh, holders. And that's why this has created uh, tremendous uh, growth in the past two days. Uh, the volume, what it was like a couple of yeah. days and it has crossed 200 percent in the last two days. And we have not yet uh, actually um, started registration. This was a small uh, Twitter message for the announcement. So we see uh, like uh, our project has been uh, accepted quite good. And the main influencer for our project is Sri Sri Tulsi Maharaji from Rindavan, India, uh, a spiritual uh, place uh, across uh, this world. And he's been influencing this project to all his followers. Okay, he's the main, uh, you can say, has influenced us to, uh, this project to a tremendous growth. And uh, he's a spiritual and yoga uh, teacher and this has given a lot of boost to our uh, community so he is our you can say the marketing head the influencer the advisor for this project completely yeah so yeah again malika arjun um, uh, thanks for choosing la token as exchange partner i have seen a lot of uh, sort of volume boost over the as you rightly said over the weeks and yep. congratulations congratulations for making it so much volumes and we look forward to grow together. And uh, yes, I mean, if you do not have any questions, let's take let's take some uh, closing thoughts from each of you because 
both of you are live on on la token exchange your tokens are live i, I mean that and you're doing great oh, I mean, uh, well i have a one question <laughs> yes to, sure go ahead go ahead to, uh, well see i see like la token has been always a, a, a pleasure to work with uh, well i would request uh, in a different way because uh, la token is only beneficial to the last you know the people who buy at a larger quantity of hbnh token uh, but there has been lately some charges been for the small kind trade of which they are hesitant and just shifting to some other exchange so i would request uh, uh, to this medium right. to you know just reduce the fees <laughs> Okay. For the small exchanges, because. <laughs> <laughs> All right, got it, got it. The small trades, sure, we will take uh, yeah, that into the small account. trades, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you for that feedback. Uh, we obviously need this kind of feedback to uh, to put it uh, to our uh, head office so that they can sort of start working on that. So, uh, Shanky, quick word from you before we wrap up. Uh, the only thing I would like to add in the La Tokens community is like the. You know the people who are in La Token are very helpful, and they have been you know there uh, throughout the process to the listing, especially Sony, and she has been you know replying each and every message of me because I've been very you know annoying, I know, and she replied back to each and every question uh, even though she is very busy, and um you know what uh, I would suggest for every new project to you know start through La Token because they are very helpful. And I'm looking forward to you know go through the process uh, process and start uh, trading over there and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you, thank you, Shanky. You are not annoying. It's my job. Don't worry. <laughs> Great, uh, Malika Arjun. Last word That's from it. you. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Uh, well, I am thankful to all of you, uh, Mr. Shanky also, very really thank you, uh, Ms. Mohanty also, and Ms. Sarin. And you, uh, there was a clear uh, uh, like picture game on out the automatic market thing. Uh, but still, there are a lot of questions, uh, so we'll see in the next few sessions, and we'll keep uh, following up uh, Ms. Sarin's uh, previous articles, because I have missed few articles from her. So hopefully, uh, if I go through that, it will get clear. Absolutely, we we have this is a weekly uh, session. It's a series, so I'll love to have you uh, on the next episode, which is next Wednesday. Thank you, Shanky and Malika Arjun. I'm going to put you backstage uh, because Thank we're going you. to wrap up the show. Thank you for coming. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you to you too. Okay. Thank Bye -bye. Much. All right, we knew back to us. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, we have some interesting, interesting topics and interesting uh, live uh, questions coming from project owners, right? I mean, next mm -hmm. next episode is going to be even more interesting. You know, every episode gets even more interesting. So <laughs> yeah, I'm wondering whether I should uh, uh, do the um, what's it, the centralized exchange and the decentralized exchange in the next one, or I talk a little bit more about liquidity. I still have to decide. Yes, we, we, we don't worry. We have every Wednesday. So to fix for this <laughs> thoughts and a lot of questions coming from project owners as well, because I, this is yeah. a very tricky. This is a, because yeah. this, this obviously this token, this crypto is not like traditional business, traditional exchanges. Right. I mean, it's new. So everybody yeah. has questions. Everybody, yeah. uh, you know, sort of including me, even though I've been, I've been a part of an exchange for the last three years, like La Token, I completed my three years, but still I still yeah. have. Uh, so I think it's a very good platform um, here to use people like you with expertise and bring in live uh, tokens, like owners of those tokens and have a discussion, which is very, very good. I think it's very effective, um, all these mm -hmm. involved here. So Minu, thank, thank you again. Uh, for next episode, guys, it's either centralized versus decentralized or liquidity. We'll, we'll decide, but we'll keep you informed. So please do tune in. Minu, last words before we wrap up. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, as you said, it's something which is new, and I guess it's a it's a learning journey for everyone. So, for example, uh, for me, the journey started uh, when I started helping, as you know, uh, one of the uh, hybrid blockchain uh, startup uh, for the community built up, Zinfin. And uh, so, when I'm trying, because I am a technology evangelist. So, and uh, because my, I don't cover just blockchain, blockchain is new to me. And I'm also learning in the process and especially tokenomics, which is an yeah. entirely different field. But you yeah. can't, 
understand the understand about blockchain if you're not understanding the tokens the crypto tokens and the market yeah. so Absolutely. for me it was a little bit of a maybe a digression or whatever but i enjoy doing it i'm still learning so there would be lots of uh, questions that would remain unanswered but i think together we can find out some answers absolutely and, uh, so yes it's been an interesting journey so far <laughs> thank you so much thank you so much minu for taking your time out on every wednesday for sharing your uh, knowledge and views and insights with our uh, with our audience uh, with our uh, uh, project owners from lachokan so i thoroughly thank you and we're going to meet again next wednesday so viewers yes, i just want to tell you that i'll be back next wednesday with minu on another topic so stay tuned uh, but i'll be back again today um to discuss uh, another interesting topic about how to market your startups on vc tv so please tune in and take care of yourself bye bye thanks a ton sunny